Hi, welcome to another video. So, there's something that I'm seeing everywhere lately. I tried it myself and actually found it quite useful as well. This is called Memory Bank. It's basically a way to make Klein, RuCode, or almost any AI coder perform better. Basically, it was proposed in Klein, and it is actually quite simple. It is a set of custom instructions that ask your AI coder to maintain some specific markdown files as memory. Basically, it will keep track of the tasks you are trying to do, keeping a record of the system architecture, stack, and stuff like that. This is mainly so you don't need to keep using the same thread to give the AI the context of what you're trying to do. It can always fetch the context of what you are working on by keeping a track of memory in markdown files. It mainly proposes to maintain six files after almost each edit. The first file is the project brief and foundation document that shapes all the other files. It is created at the project start if it doesn't already exist, and it will define core requirements and goals along with the source of truth for project code. Another thing that it has is the product context. This is basically the high-level overview of what the product is about, so the AI can reference it in each thread that you create in the project. So, it contains why this project exists, the problem that it solves, as well as how it should work, along with user experience goals, which is basically the design philosophy or anything like that. Along with that, it has the active context file. Active context is basically the current work focus. It contains the task that you are currently trying to achieve, along with recent changes, next steps, active decisions and considerations, important patterns and preferences, as well as learnings and project insights. Then, we have system patterns that will basically keep track of the system architecture or stack that it is using, along with key technical decisions, design patterns in use, like if it is using Tailwind or ShadCN or anything like that. It will also keep track of component relationships like which component is used on which page and stuff like that, as well as critical implementation paths, which is also great. It also has a tech context markdown file, which is basically for technologies used, development setup, technical constraints, dependencies, and tool usage patterns as well. The last file is the progress file, and it contains what works, what's left to build, current status, known issues, and the evolution of project decisions. It can also create files on its own if it thinks that it wants to help organize something, like complex feature documentation, integration specifications, API documentation, testing strategies, or even deployment procedures. This is basically how it works, and we also give it the info on how it should approach the memory bank updates and stuff like that. But now, let me show you how you can use it, how it works, and how it is turning out to be. But before we do that, let me tell you about today's sponsor, Photogenius AI. Photogenius AI is an all-in-one AI-powered art generator that allows you to type anything and get stunning visuals instantly. It gives you all kinds of image generation, video generation, and even 3D model generation models in one place, whether it be Flux, Stable Diffusion, Google's Image Gen, or VO2 Video Gen model, or even Kling, or any image or video generator model that you can think of. You can just type in your prompt for a video or image and get it generated in literal seconds. You can also generate 3D model generations with it in literal seconds as well. Not just that, it also gives you the option to do advanced AI image editing as well with their cool AI tools like an AI avatar generator, background removal, logo generator, emotion emoji generator, YouTube thumbnail generator, or even add an app icon generator. And the best part is that it starts at only $10 and you can get an additional 25% off these already great deals by using my coupon code KING25. 
25. So, make sure that you check out photogenius.ai through the link in the description and generate some cool stuff with it. Now back to the video. First of all, make sure that you upgrade Klein to the latest version. Now, open it up and head over to the settings option. Here, you'll see the custom instructions option. Just paste the instructions that you find on the Klein site and now just save it. Now we can go ahead and make it work. So, using it is quite simple. You can create the memory bank folder in it, as it will keep the stuff in the memory bank folder. So, make sure that you do that. You can just start from the base, or here. I have a project that doesn't yet have the memory bank set up, and I'm going to ask it to initialize the memory bank. Now, you'll see that it will start doing it. It will first go ahead and create a bunch of files for us, and write the stuff as written in the main custom instructions, which is kind of cool for sure. If we wait a bit, then it's now done, and we can now go ahead and see these files. There's the project brief, product context, active context, as well as system patterns, tech context, and the progress file as well. You can see that it has made it very well, and it does it quite well for sure. So, this is kind of great. You basically see an overview of what we are trying to do, and everything like that. One thing that is great with this is that it also allows for cross-reference, which means that if you're using Klein now and then want to use Windsurf, you can also ask it to follow the same instructions for the memory bank and then make it work accordingly, which is pretty good. It really works amazingly well. It does these things automatically, although you can ask it to update the memory bank, and it will do it quite well. What I do is, I change it to Flash 2.5 when asking for an update as it saves some money. So, you can do that as well. Another thing is that there is also a memory bank MCP server that follows the same base as what the custom instructions do, and you can try that out as well. I have tried it and didn't find it as interesting, so I just use the custom instructions. If you want to use this, then you can just get it added to the config file and then use it accordingly, and it should work well. This is really cool for most of the tasks that I do, and it should also work with RuCode, as well as Windsurf and Cursor, if you add the custom instructions via the rules file, and it should work well with them as well. It just allows you to break free from working in the same thread for the project and allows you to save money as well. Because if you use a super long thread, then it will keep getting longer and it'll cost you a lot for the input tokens, which is kind of bad for sure. This allows you to keep track of what's happening and then use it. It just works like this and is actually kind of cool for sure. Overall, it's pretty cool. Anyway, share your thoughts below and subscribe to the channel. You can also donate via Super Thanks option or join the channel as well and get some perks. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.